First of all, I would like to thank the European Myeloma Network for giving me the opportunity to participate in this very important uh, debate on uh, AMCA's follow-up. I am strongly in, in favor of uh, follow-up in all AMCA's individuals and I will tell you why. S here are my uh, disclosures. So fact number one, we know that all myeloma are preceded by AMCA's. No one with myeloma does not pass the AMCA states, although, importantly, not all AMCA individuals uh, go on and progress to myeloma. We all know this slide, the probability of progression. It's about 1 to 1.5% 1 uh, per year in AMCA individuals. And this obviously varies by risk group, so there are uh, different risk uh, groups out there or models. Uh, this is the Mayo model you can see and I think we can all agree that high risk individuals with MGUS were, which have like 58% chance of uh, developing myeloma in 20 years, they should be followed. And I think everyone agrees on intermediate risk as well. I think the main topic here is should we follow low risk MGUS? These do have these have IgG M spike. They have normal FLC ratio, and their M spike is below 15 grams per liter. So 5% at 20, 20 years. Is it worth it? These are actually 22 myeloma patients. So I think if you have a workplace or a town with 449 individuals. And you can tell them that 22 of them will develop myeloma. I mean, it's, it's not very low. So this is actually the current recommendation. Patients with low-risk AMCA should be followed with protein electrophoresis in six months and if stable can be followed every two to three years or when symptoms suggestive of plasma cell malignancy arise. And you can see I randomly highlighted and underlined one of the co-authors co of this uh, paper. So the pattern of progression is complex. Here you can see how this is. And you can, uh, but the risk scores tell you on average. But he, here you can f see individual uh, patients. Here are AMCAs that have progressed to myeloma. And you can see that many of them are stable for many, many years. And then they all of a sudden they go upwards and develop myeloma and some of them just develop myeloma very very quickly so on average we can predict per individual in patient we cannot so does it even matter to follow amcus at all so we did a study where we looked at uh, 14,000 myeloma patients and we analyzed if having information that they had MGUS prior to their myeloma diagnosis had an impact on survival. So we know they all had MGUS before, but sometimes we know about it, mostly we don't. So here you can see people with knowledge of MGUS and they get myeloma have uh, an improved survival once they get myeloma. And this is uh, highly statistically significant. If we look at this uh, in the uh, statistical model, you can see that the risk or the difference is about 14% overall survival uh, benefit if you are being followed for um, MGUS. And interestingly, we looked at those with a low M protein at MGUS diagnosis, which typically do not develop myeloma. Well, if they do, their survival is the worst of them all. It's 86% worse uh, uh, compared to people not. So this has also been analyzed in other studies. There are uh, at least two other studies uh, highlighting the importance of MGUS follow-up on survival if you get myeloma. And this study here looked at complication complications. And you can see here that there, if you do not follow people with MGUS and they develop myeloma, you're asking for more hypercalcemia, more fractures, more kidney disease, and poorer myeloma survival. 
and you can see this here. Actually, this is very small. I think I'll enlarge it. So you're asking for more fractures, more kidney disease, more hypercalcemia, and poorer survival. Even bigger ladders here. Choosing no MCAS follow-up leads to more fractures, more kidney disease, more hypercalcemia, and poorer myeloma survival. There is no debate here. And it's not like people just are born with high-risk MGUS or smoldering myeloma or myeloma. They all have to progress through the individual risk score. So if you have IgG disease, you will go from low risk to intermediate low to intermediate high to high risk and eventually you might get smoldering myeloma or myeloma. Some people stay here, some people are diagnosed here, but they were there here someday. And this is uh, shown here that people travel through the different stages of risk group. So if you were first identified randomly at low risk, you need to check on them again and again, and you need to follow them. The whole concept of treating smoldering myeloma, these are also by definition asymptomatic. How are you going to find them? Well, you have to follow your AMCOS individuals. Once they progress and get smoldering myeloma, you can offer them treatment. If you don't follow them, you won't be able to treat them at the, myelo at the smoldering phase. You will treat them when they already have myeloma and it's too late. A lot of people worry about the psychological impact of um, <coughs> AMCOS follow-up. So I'm going to ask you, which is worse? Tell the patient they have AMCAS, but the risk of progression is low, so they do not need follow-up. Or tell the patient they have AMCAS, but the risk of progression is low, but we will provide follow-up. I, I think most people will uh, pick the second choice here. So this is in fact what we're doing in Iceland. In the Iceland screen treats or prevents myeloma, the ISTOP MM study. So we are screening Icelanders with SPEP and FLC ratio and performing a randomized study analyzing different approaches in AMGUS follow-up. So we have 80,759 individuals, 54.5% of the Icelandic uh, population, 40 years and older, gave informed consent that we have already 75,000 samples. So we actually uh, analyzed that these are preliminary data. And we can show that once you diagnose MGUS and you check before and after depressive symptoms and anxiety, it's not the worst. It's actually a little bit better. Another question that we are asking, what's in the bone marrow? The current recommendation is do not perform bone marrow in low-risk AMCOS. Well, in fact, 6% of them have more than 10% plasma cells in the bone marrow. So these are my stay at home, since this is a virtual meeting, there are no take-home messages. Inform your patients on AMCOS and its natural history. Provide balanced information and then follow them. AMCAS follow-up leads to improved survival in myeloma with less severe complications. AMCAS follow-up does not lead to anxiety or depression. And AMCAS follow-up is not expensive. Ignoring that your patients have AMCAS does not make it disappear. Thank you very much.